And now look to Stephen Hale to continue the case for the proposition. Here, here. Good evening. Thank you for the invitation. And first, may I start by congratulating Dina on a truly excellent speech. I also wanted to congratulate her in particular on a phenomenally selective quotation from my Twitter account, uh, <laughs> which must have taken some time to, to compile, and also for her very creative interpretation of this evening's motion. Make no mistake, if that interpretation was correct, I would be sitting next to her. Sitting next to her are two members of the Conservative Party who will speak in defence of the government's record, and it is the government's record that we will be debating tonight, both for better and for worse. I want you to cast your minds back eight months to the middle of August 2015. At that time, just as we are today, we were in the midst of the greatest refugee crisis that the world has ever seen. There were 59 and a half million people who were displaced worldwide. We all know, and we were, it was mentioned earlier, that more than two million Syrian refugees were in Turkey. But of course, there are other crises, other developing countries, Kenya, Burundi, Congo, where people are displaced and are refugees at far greater numbers than we hear about so often in the Middle East. This is a global refugee crisis. And our response to that refugee crisis is a test of our common humanity. Now, what was our government doing and what was our government saying in August 2015? Well, let's talk about what they were doing. The total number of Syrians resettled through the government's resettlement programme in August 2015 was 216. The total number of people resettled annually from countries other than Syria was 750. That was 16 months after the UN High Commission for Refugees called on developed countries to resettle 140,000 Syrians who could not continue to live in the region. And what was our government saying in August 2015? The Foreign Secretary was warning us of the threat of marauding migrants. We heard earlier about the Prime Minister's comments about the swarms of people that might be coming to Britain. So the refugee crisis was there, but the government certainly wasn't. But of course, something incredible happened. There was a recognition among the British people triggered by first the tragic death of around 50 people in a lorry in Austria, and then of course the photo of a young boy, Island Kurdi, who died, whose body was washed up on a beach. And there was a wave of public compassion. And our government moved. They moved fast. And the Prime Minister announced a commitment to resettle 20,000 Syrians, a commitment I'm sure we will continue to hear more about. And over the past few weeks, we've of course had sustained pressure on the government to act in relation to the plight of unaccompanied child refugees here in Europe. And as a result, the government has acted. But what I want to put on the line tonight is to ask you why, and to ask you how you should vote tonight and what signal you are sending. Because when this country has stepped forward to do the right thing by refugees, it has done so because of the irresistible pressure on this government to do so, not because of the leadership of a government which should be stepping up at what is such a crucial time in history for those 59 and a half million displaced people. Now, before I go on, I want to acknowledge some of the pressures that the government is under. The British public is divided on immigration issues. You would have to be pretty poorly connected to public affairs not to know that. Around 25% of the public feels passionately that we should have an open economy and society, and they're pro-immigration. But around 25% of people feel very differently and think that whether we're looking at European migration or at refugees, that our borders should be closed, that there's no space in our country for new arrivals, whatever might motivate them to move. But 50% of the public is described by the pollsters as the anxious middle. They're not sure how to feel. On the one hand, they do feel compassion when they see a photo of that young boy. On the other hand, they won't worry. They worry about the wages. They worry about housing. And so for me, the test of leadership, the test of a government, is how they handle those people. Whether they spread fear and anxiety, or whether they spread hope and reassurance. And my criticism of this government is that too often 
They have used the language, as they were doing in August 2015, before the public stepped up, to say to people, we can't do enough, there are too many. The Home Secretary's statement at this party conference, these people are young and they're fit and they're male and they're coming here and we need to close our borders. That is not a response that I can be proud of. That is not a response that I think we should be endorsing tonight. And I want to turn our attention also to a much more domestic question, to what happens when an asylum seeker comes to the UK, to whether they are welcome, to whether we give them an opportunity to rebuild their lives in safety and in dignity in our country. And my contention, based on our own experience of the people that we support, is that too often the system doesn't give them that support. It doesn't give them the confidence that they need to rebuild their lives in safety. And there's one totemic issue I want to flag to you, and that is this, that refugees in Britain cannot get into classes to learn our language. And without that, how do we expect them to contribute to our societies? How do we expect them to make friends with our neighbours? How do we expect them to get the jobs that they so desperately want to see? So that, for me, is a touchstone issue because it tells you everything about this government's attitude, that we're not even prepared to invest. And I use the word invest because if those people get jobs, they will soon be paying taxes and more than reimbursing the cost of teaching us, teaching them uh, our, our language. And so for me, the welcome that we give people, the welcome that our state gives them, is a crucial part of whether we can stand up and be proud of Britain's response, or whether, as I urge you tonight, it should be condemned. Now, there is one issue you will hear a lot about. You heard about it from Dina. And I want to say straight away that I agree with the opposition on this question. That is this, that the, great, the government of this country has done a great deal to support refugees in the neighbouring countries from which they have been forced to flee. And that is right, and it is proper, and it is commendable. And they were doing it before August 2015. And that is something I think we should celebrate. But I do not think that it is a trigger for taking a different position on this vote, because that, for me, is not the only moral test of our response. We've talked about the other dimensions of this, about whether we're prepared to take our fair share, as the first speaker for the motion spoke so passionately, take our fair share of the refugees from different countries, whether we should be acting in a proportionate way. And as I say, the numbers are abundantly clear. If we were bringing 216 Syrians here before September 2015, that is not a proportionate response. If we cannot find the money to enable refugees to learn English, to contribute to our society, that is not a proportionate response. And so do not let the focus on the spending that we are rightly placing in humanitarian uh, support to refugees in different regions of the world distract you and lull you into voting for this motion. And in particular, I want to highlight, as we briefly heard earlier, that there is a much darker side to the UK's role internationally. And that is that we were a prime mover in the deal between the European Union and Turkey. A deal which prevents asylum seekers and refugees from seeking sanctuary. A deal which keeps them in a country where they cannot claim asylum, where they cannot be expected to work. That, for me, is unacceptable. And so I want to close by reminding you of this. That refugees are people like you and me. They're people who've lost their housing, who've lost their possessions, who've lost family and friends. And the test of our hu common humanity is simple. Are we making them welcome in our country at this critical time? Are we stepping up and doing enough at this time of international crisis? And the evidence is abundantly clear. I regret to say they are not, and you should vote, against, vote for this motion. Thank you.